I want to talk about this investment property. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Can it make you some money? I think so. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of the MLS Search Analysis Show. You're watching Holton Wise TV. I'm James Wise, and this is a property that I want to talk about for you, Jerry and Lisa, okay? Where we are at uh, right now uh, with our investments, right? We've been working to get you guys through your 1031 exchange, and I'm just kind of scrolling through some of the photos uh, wide chat so you guys could take a look, right? This fully occupied duplex here, okay? A few things I want to talk about, want to point out, but, you know, I just wanted you guys to get some of the photos out of the way here. We have been working to uh, fulfill your 1031, right? You guys are trying to get $400,000 worth of real estate. We've been going uh, through a decent chunk of properties, doing due diligence on, on a lot of properties. And that's smart. That's what you got to do, right? You got to get the right property at the right price. Okay. And, uh, we just recently put, uh, that quad in Lakewood under contract for you guys. So you guys got the quad under contract. We're, uh, waiting on the inspections to go through right now. So my team is getting all of that stuff scheduled, uh, with the sellers and the listing agents for you guys, uh, for that. And then you guys had asked me to, to look at a few, multi-family properties for you guys you guys are seeing if we can get a little bigger bang for the buck if we hit up some of those duplex units in some of the c-ish type neighborhoods right and that's why i pulled this one up right it's a it's a dated duplex okay uh as you've seen from some of the other photos and like the photo right here like it's nothing like extremely special like this is definitely a dated kitchen right so like at the next turnover of course you're going to want to give some love to that kitchen floor Right, you're gonna want to replace that with a newer vinyl floor, and then you know you would just do like normal turnover stuff, right? Painting the floors, the walls, refinishing the hardwoods, and then doing the kitchens and the baths. So you might be looking uh, at some decent cost on your turnover rentals just to upgrade the stuff. But the the bones of this are good, right? Like here is the one of the furnaces. This is a very Pretty new looking furnace, much newer uh, than what you usually see in these occupied duplexes, right? I would guesstimate this to be around five years old. They last about 30 years. They cost about $3,000, okay? And then this is something else I'd like to bring to your attention. Uh, both the floor and the walls. Now, this is what I would guesstimate to be an asbestos-based tiling, okay? Now, I know out in California, you hear the term asbestos-based tiling and people freak out. It's like the end of the world. Not so much here in Ohio, right? Uh, it's dangerous, yes, if you're working with asbestos every day or like if you're like pulling these floors up every single day. Yes, that's dangerous. It's not illegal or dangerous to just have in a rental property, but I know it will get flagged on your inspection report. Uh, if the tiles ever started cracking, it became a hazard. We'd want to encapsulate it, uh, which would essentially, that's a fancy term for, we would put a vinyl allure flooring over it, okay? And then the next thing I want to bring to your attention is these walls. Now, in Cleveland, in these basements, I never like to see people try to finish these. These basements, these are 100-year-old properties. We have a high water table here. The way they're built, it's a very porous material that the, the structure was built off of. Some moisture gets in there, right? You don't usually see a lot of bone-dry basements here in the Cleveland market. So I'd probably like to see that eventually get uh, completely gutted out if the inspector notates any signs of moisture on the inspection report. As of right now, we do not know that. That'll be something we'd probably want to renegotiate after the inspection. But I wanted to go over that with you while we were talking. Here's your two hot water tanks. Both seem to be pretty shiny, pretty newish. I would guesstimate you're in the five to seven year range on those puppies, right? And then just more shots of the units, right? We already got tenants living here. You know, another, again, it's dated. So you're going to want to do some upgrading to the kitchens, right? Like the cabinetry here is fine. Like we wouldn't be replacing this, probably wouldn't even be repainting it. Like all this is good, the backsplash. The only thing we'd probably need to do is maybe update the hardware 
do the vinyl floor and then, you know, with your repainting. But that would be at the next turnover. No telling when that would be. And I'm going to get into the rents here momentarily. Same deal with the baths, right? The baths are dated, okay? But as it sits right now, this thing is a cash cow, okay? In the neighborhood, it's uh, what I consider like a low C type neighborhood, low C. We're kind of like on the curve, like uh, kind of like Denison's here, Lorraine's here, and it kind of like on this side. Let me show you the map, actually. Like, I'll show you the map here. Give me one second, okay? So, typically, like, I would say, you know, I would consider this area right here to be C. I would say this is like D. So, like, we're right there on the border, right here on the curve, right? So, you know, I think you're like a C. C minus D plus type neighborhood, okay? 3182 West 88th, Cleveland. That's the address. Now, <clears throat> with all the deficiencies that I mentioned on the property, okay, I do not think the property is worth what they're asking. 95900 I do think that is too high. But we can make some money here, right? Because those two tenants that are already in there, like I said, you don't have to worry about upgrading that stuff right now. There is tenants in there. And they're paying close to market. 600 650 so it brings in 1250 That's 15 Gs a year. Of the 15 Gs that comes in, I anticipate you spending a little over 8 on average every year. Clearing you 6612 in free cash flow. And then that does not calculate the approximately 2100 that I am saving for CapEx, which would be, you know, replacing the furnaces, the hot water tanks, the roofs. Uh, vacancy and non payment, eventually the tenants won't pay. And then repairs and maintenance, which will go towards upgrading the kitchens and the baths uh, for when these tenants eventually move out, okay? So it can make some money, right? So with the fact that we have. 1250 coming in, decent chunk of money coming in, but we do have some dated units and we have pretty good mechanicals though. Updated electrical, newer looking furnace. I don't have a picture of the other furnace, so I'm guessing that one's probably older. That's probably towards the end of life, right? They just took a picture of the newer one, but that's okay. Uh, hot water tanks in the mid mid range there. The roof, that's older, right? That's, that's probably in the last decade of its life expectancy. Uh, with all of that stuff said, okay, I would anticipate... Uh, the correct price for this property would be $80,000, right? So we're going to be asking for a $16,000 discount. Now, that would be us going in, getting on our contract now for that eighty. dollars If after the inspection report uh, comes out, it turns out that there are some moisture issues in that basement, I'd want to renegotiate a few grand off. And then there is one other thing that caught my eye. Uh, this is a drop ceiling in the kitchen, right? I do not like to see drop ceilings uh, anywhere other than the basement. Usually they're hiding uh, some type of water issues and I actually saw some staining on that drop ceiling in a closer photo. I'm trying to find it. Let me see if I can't find it. Ah, here we go. Here's another good shot, right? You see that? That's some water staining right here, okay? We got some water staining, so we definitely want... The inspector to look into that is that an active leak is it an old leak i don't know right you can see it again in this picture okay so we have some water staining evidence in the two kitchens right so i think 80k would be the appropriate price to go under contract have our inspector get in there to do some more due diligence if the basement turns out to, to be what i would anticipate a lot of these basements are where there is some water issues there is some mold in those walls and those in those paneling down there in that basement, what we would want to do would be to gut it out, get rid of the drop ceiling down in the basement, gut out those uh, paneled walls in the basement. I am not worried about that asbestos flooring. I know that's going to get flagged on the inspection report, but I want you guys to know my thoughts. I don't think that's an issue. I'm more worried about the mold on the walls. Those two items, and then if the inspector determines that upstairs where we have the water staining, there's still active leaks, I would like to go back to the sellers and try to renegotiate, right? To go in and gut out that basement and then dry lock it, we're probably looking at like a cost of like five five six k okay and then probably a few k in regards to the the water issues 
uh, in each of the, the kitchens. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Uh, or then the one kitchen, rather, in the one kitchen, right? I, I have evidence. It appears there's two pictures, but it appears to be the same kitchen. If that's like the downstairs unit, it's probably water leaking from uh, the kitchen upstairs, which would be an easier fix. If it turns out that's the upstairs unit and it's coming from the roof, right, then we have a, a bigger issue. But the inspector will have to look at that roof, look at those kitchens, and see if there's water issues in the basement. If that happens, I want to go back to these folks and renegotiate, right? So that might take us down into the sixty-five dollars to $70,000 range, worst case scenario, I would imagine. But as of right now, I think eighty is a fair starting point to go under contract and continue doing more due diligence. I mean, it's also very possible they fixed all the leaks, okay? And it's very possible that there isn't water damage in that basement, mold in that basement, but we have to determine that for ourselves, right? We can't just take their words for it, right? So as of right now, where we're at, $80,000. With the current tenants, it's an 8.3 cap. You finance it, it's a 17.9% cash on cash return. And I had talked about the fact that you could, at the next turnover, upgrade the stuff, right? Get the kitchens, the new vinyl flooring, upgrade the look of the kitchens and the baths, spend a little bit of money on that. You do that, you're going to be able to rent each of these units for 750 so it could be bringing in 1500 That's one way to get to 1500 The other way to get to 1500 is to keep these tenants in there and slowly increase their rents, right? So don't think it's like, oh, we could buy this duplex and then we immediately have to remove the tenants and spend like 10K in each unit upgrading it. No, you definitely don't have to do that. I mean, it could be five years down the road before you'd have to do that. I mean, these are very close to market rate tenants, like 650 to 750. I mean, that's only a hundred dollar difference, right? You don't make the money in real estate by getting that extra hundred. You make it by keeping people in the units and not doing turnovers, right? So I think this is a property we should definitely look into. Uh, but going into it, I just wanted you to know that I did have a couple of those reservations. So it by no means, is a perfect property, but I think if we just went in anything under 80 at this point with a lot of those unknowns, I don't think we'd get any uh, real reaction from the seller. So I think we really need to get in there at 80, which seems to be fair uh, until it turns out that some of my questions uh, prove to be true. If that's the case, then 80 is no longer fair. You guys need to get it lower. If everything is kosher and those are old stains and uh, the leaks have been fixed, that's pretty good. 80 still seems fair, but we got to definitely see what's going on behind those walls in the basement. So that's my thoughts on this one, Jerry and Lisa. I'm actually going to be spending the rest of the day filming other videos for you. You guys had requested two from me, uh, but I'm actually going to do three for you, right? I got these two duplexes. This one, I'm going to do another one here shortly. And then I was looking at uh, properties for another client. And uh, in that search, something popped up that shouldn't have been in that section of the MLS that really makes sense for you guys. So I'm, I'm going to tack that one on today as well because I think it's going to be right up your alley. Uh, so let's get into that second video right now. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.